let's do a quick recap on the periodontal ligament. Now, periodontal ligament is part of the periodontium, and I'll tell you what the periodontium means. When I say periodontium, what I am referring to, let's actually examine this word. Peri means around, and odont means tooth. So the structures that are around the tooth, and one of the structures that are around the um, tooth is the periodontal ligament fibers. Periodontal ligament fibers look like this. They're just um, lines of their fibers, really, that just go all around the root, okay? And it attaches to the bone on one side and the cementum on the other side. Now let's do a quick recap about what the tooth germ looks like. So this is a tooth germ. And what you see over here is this is the enamel organ. And this over here is the dental papilla. And all around it is the dental follicle or the dental sac. So we know this is where the enamel organ is where the enamel is formed. The dental papilla, we know that makes the pulp as well as the dentin. And then the dental sac or the dental follicle what does that make? That actually makes part of the periodontium. That makes the periodontium. The parts, the four parts of the periodontium, just to recap, the four parts of the periodontium, the four parts that are around our teeth, it, they are the gums, so gingiva, the bone, the cementum, and the periodontal ligament fibers. Those are the four tissues that are surrounding our teeth. Okay, so periodontal ligament fiber is part of these, one of the four tissues of the periodontium, of the um, tissues surrounding our tooth. So when we're looking at the periodontal ligament fibers, which again are the ones that are in between the bone and the cementum, they've got lots, they, when you look inside it microscopically, they've got fibers in them, they've got cells in them, they've got some intracellular substances which we'll look at in them. And the main reason we have these fibers is to keep the, um, keep our teeth anchored into our jaw. It's to support the, th the teeth within the jaw. And if we were to measure the length of the periodontal ligament fibers, it's really, really small. It's 0 0.15 to 0 0.38 millimeters. That is the width of our fibers. So we're gonna look at all these things here. Let's start with the gingival group. So there's lots, there's two types of fibers that we have that are around our tooth. There is the gingival group, and that means that the fibers extend to the gingival area to the gum area and then there's the dental alveolar group which means the fibers extend to the bone okay so gingival means it's extending to the gingival area to the gum which is this um, dental alveolar group that means it's alveolar means bone so the tooth to the bone and so the tooth here is embedded the periodontal fibers are embedded to the bone so if it's embedded to the bone it's the fibers are part of the dental alveolar group. If the fibers are embedded to the gums, the gingiva, then it is a fiber from the gingival group. And again, they, what are they used for? Why do we have them? To suspend um, our teeth within the socket, within the uh, jaw. So if we look at um, let's just see here. Okay, yeah. So if we look at this slide over here, this slide is talking about the inter interstitial space. And the interstitial space is basically the space between the periodontal ligament fibers. So there's a bundle of periodontal ligament fibers here. There's another bundle here. There's another bundle here. But in between the spaces of periodontal ligament fibers, there's blood vessels. So I've kind of indicated red dots to show that there's blood vessels in here. There's blue for nerves. There's there's nerves in there. There's lymphatics uh, vessels that are in there as well. So there, there are other things that are in between the fibers. And that thing that are, the space between the periodontal ligament fibers, are, that space is known as the interstitial space. Okay, let's look at the gingival fiber group. Remember, the gingival fiber are the ones that are attached to the, or the ones that are in the gingival area or attached to the gums in the, the fibers are attached to the gums, right, in this area. And so there's the free, attached. Let's look at that. If we have fibers that go to the free gingival area, so the free gingival area 
that's referring to the gums that are free from the tooth okay so that's not attached the gums that are not directly attached to the tooth and so if we have fibers like the dental gingival group that's going up to the free gingival area then that is part of the gingival fiber group because it's confined within the gingival area we can have fibers that go to the attached gingiva attached gingiva is directly below the free gingiva and those again because they're within the gingival area it's known it stays within the gingival fiber group category we could even have circumferential fibers and these fibers are the ones that just go around a loop around the um the, the tooth and then we have the transeptal fibers which is a gingival fiber because it's attached to the gums and it's attached to the i know it may, it may not look like it's attached to um the gum but here it is it's attached from one gum to the other gum or it is confined within the gingival area and it's you'll see it between two adjoining teeth okay so here's one tooth here's another tooth and if you look at the gums the gums are connected by this transeptal fiber so it's confined in the gingival area which is why it's known as a gingival fiber group but if we switch gears a little and look at the dento alveolar fiber group, I want you to know that the key thing here is everything is attached to the bone, not the gums. So let's look at the alveolar crust fibers. The alveolar crust refers to the crust of the bone, and that is attached to the, um, the root or the cementum, and you can see that. And so if you see fibers from the bone to the tooth, that's known as the alveolar crust fibers because it stems from it starts from the alveolar crust. We have horizontal fibers. These are the ones that are mid root. And this interesting fact about this is the mid root, the horizontal fibers that go in a horizontal direction, they are actually the thinnest. The periodontal ligament is really thin over here. We have oblique fib fibers, which kind of go diagonal. And notice they all embed into the bone, right? The bone is right here. Because they're embedding into the bone, it is part of the dento-alveolar fiber group. So apical fibers are right below near the apex. And then interradicular fiber, inter means between. So interradicular fiber are between roots. So if you have two or three roots, there are fibers in between the roots, and they are called interradicular fibers. So between the roots to the bone, to the alveolar bone. And here's another image showing you where all the fibers are. So just like before, I was talking to you guys about the interstitial spaces, where there are spaces in between the periodontal ligament fibers. It's very vascular. That's where all the blood supply is. It also has nerves in them. So in those spaces, there are if you um, arteries, there's nerves, there's veins. And so this is a microscopic view and you can see the nerve is there within the space between the periodontal ligament fibers there's arteries there's veins so it is very vascular um, in those areas now also within the periodontal ligament fibers so here are the periodontal ligament fibers and if we were to zoom in you can see we have cementum on one side we have the bone on the other side hanging out in the cementum area we have these blue cells which are known as cementoblast these are cells that make cementum on the opposite end we have osteoblast these are cells that make bone we also have osteoclast which are cells that resorb bone um, we might even have cementoclast again they resorb bone interesting fact fibroblast okay fibroblast do they do both they make fibers and they destroy fibers so you know how we have osteoclast to destroy bone we have cementoclast to destroy cementum but fibroblast is we call it just we don't call it fibroclast we say fibroblast and fibroblast is both they make fibers and they destroy fibers so this slide over here is showing you that the peri this is the periodontal ligament fibers that's just running across. They have a very rich vascular system, and you can see that in red, like so many blood um, vessels that are just looping around or attaching from the cementum to the bone. So it just loops around the periodontal ligament fibers. So it's very vascular. It's also 
Um, there's also a neural system. So if we look over here, you can see nerves kind of looping out, nerves coming out. And so there are nerve terminals within the periodontal ligament fibers. So that's really important when we feel pressure or pain, the nerves are sending the message to the brain um, to say that, you know, we're feeling a lot of pressure or feeling pain in our um, mouth. So let's look at the cells again. So within the periodontal ligament fibers, there are cells. And there's fibroblast, osteoblast, cementoblast. All of these make fiber, bone, cementum. Remember, fibroblast can also destroy fiber. We have macrophages and osteoclasts. So actually, let's look at that. Um, okay, so macrophages and osteoclasts. Interesting fact, monocyte, which is a white blood cell, they make osteoclast they make macrophage. So from the monocyte, macrophage is made. From the monocyte, osteoclast is made. Remember, osteoclast has that ruffled border so that it can easily resorb or eat away the bone. And macrophage, what do they do? They, because it's a white blood cell, they kill anything bad. So if they see bacteria, they're going to eat it up. So this is a macrophage eating up a bacteria. Any dead cells, any foreign bodies, anything that doesn't belong in our body, they're going to try its best to eat it up. Epithelial rest. Do you remember when in the previous chapters we were looking at the epithelial rest and we said, so right above here is your crown and then this is the root. Okay, so the root is being formed over here. The root dentin is being formed. The inner and outer enamel epithelium, when they get combined, they make the epithelial root sheath. Okay, so this is the epithelial root sheath. What happens is once the root has started to develop, the epithelial root sheet, it disintegrates. And you can see here, we don't have this orange sheet anymore, right? It's gone. It's dis it's, that's what it does. It disintegrates. Oops. And that's known as the epithelial rest when it disintegrates. So you may remember it as the H-E-R-S, the Hertwig's root sheet. Um, that's another word for it. So they disintegrate. Now, sometimes when they're disintegrating, they could um, hang out in the periodontal ligament space. Let's look at it in this um, with this view. So this is the bone, and this is the cementum. And I want you to imagine periodontal ligament fibers running all across here in this space here, where the periodontal ligament fibers are supposed to be attached to the bone on one end, cementum on the other end. And you can see these are the epithelial rest. So some of them are just you know hanging out there resting. Some of them are proliferating, so they're growing. We get more and more cells growing attached. Some of them are degenerating, so they die. These cells die. And some of them could be attached to the epithelial um, root sheet. So it didn't disintegrate. It didn't detach. So they could all be here in the periodontal ligament space. Intercellular tissue. Inter means in between. In between what? In between cells. So we have cells that are hanging out in the periodontal ligament um, space. And what you're seeing is in between the cells, there's water. In between the cells, there's also different types of proteins. There's the uh, glycoprotein and the proteoglycans. Now, they're for the purpose of this class, just know that they're proteins and they um, are structured differently. But they are, these proteins are hanging around, water plus these proteins are hanging around in between cells. It's, it's um, there to protect the cells, it's there to surround the cells. All right, now let's look at why we have the periodontal ligament fibers. What are the, its function? And there are four. Let's start with the first one. This is the most important function, which is the supportive function. It supports our teeth. This tooth is there embedded into the socket because of our periodontal ligament fibers. If we didn't have periodontal ligament fibers, this tooth would pop out. So it's there to support the, um, the tooth. An interesting fact, these fibers are stretched. Anytime we put a lot of pressure onto our tooth or teeth, it does get stretched and relaxed. It is elastic. Have you ever bitten into something and then you feel immense pain? Like let's say you're eating, I don't know, a, a 
bowl of rice and all of a sudden you've you felt a bone for example or, or something hard and it caused that pain when you bite into something hard that is because they're pair and the feeling of that pain is because of your periodontal ligament fibers your periodontal ligament fibers have nerves right they have receptors that are um attached to the nerves and the nerves send the message to the brain so the nerves within the periodontal ligament fiber is sending a message to the brain saying that we just bit something hard and it's causing a lot of pain. Remember how I said there's lots of, um, it's very vascular, a periodontal ligament fiber is va vascular because it's got lots of blood vessels. The blood has rich nutrients and the nutrients go and feed the cementum. So from the blood, the nutrients is going to the cementum and feeding the cementum. It's also going to the bone and feeding the bone. If there was no blood supply here, the cementum and the bone would die. So the blood supply is extremely important to keep everything vital and alive. And lastly, what this slide is saying is that it also periodontal ligament fibers also help with the maintenance. So anytime your the tissues around your teeth are, um, you know, it's um. It could be dying, it could be injured for what for loss of reason like trauma, the periodontal ligament fibers, because it has it's um rich in that it has lots of blood vessels, it's vascular, it has um nerve a lot of neural stuff, and it's got a lot of cells. All this is helping repair tissues if needed. Okay, so it is thriving, it's trying to repair all the tissues when needed. And this is interesting. So as we age, what happens is that periodontal ligament fibers, they aren't as strong anymore because the cells that are in our periodontal ligament fibers decrease and the activity of the cells also decrease with age. In fact, if you were to look microscopically at the periodontal ligament fibers, which is, which, which is demonstrated here in blue, you'll see that yes, it's attached to cementum on one side and bone on the other side. But what you're going to notice is the cementum, instead of it being straight, it is now scalloped. And same, same thing with the bone, it's scalloped. So what happens is scalloping occurs in the aging cementum and bone, and the fibers are attached to those peaks. Rather than the entire surface, it's attached to those peaks. So it isn't, periodontal ligament fibers isn't as strong as we age. I hope that helps. Thanks everyone for listening.